Hi class, it's Professor Nick Sensky at UNC Charlotte. Um, this is part two of the lecture three uh, demonstrations uh, talking about panelizing uh, services. And uh, this is really gonna be sort of basic, uh, but hopefully it'll give you um, the tools you need to look at your assignment this week and begin thinking about how um, you can panelize something for your daylight study project. So um, there are lots of different ways to start with a surface or to, to obtain a surface. Uh, if you look at the surface tools uh, in Rhino, you know, you can draw a surface as a rectangular uh, plane. You can do a rail surface if you have cross sections and a rail. Um, you could do um, a surface if you have the edges of things. Um, you can you could loft something. Uh, you could extrude something. Surface from points. There are lots of different ways um, to look at surfaces. So um, just something really basic, like I'm gonna, I'm gonna have a section, um, I'm, I'm gonna have a, a basic kind of flat surface and uh, you can think of that as a skylight or um, a piece of your facade. And I'm gonna do another surface that has a bit more interest and just take a curve and you know, make something kind of curvy and <clears throat> extrude it. Now for your project, I mean, you'll take a service that you derive from your project, uh, and so it'll it'll be more meaningful than this, but this will be enough uh, for our demonstration. So I've got a surface like that, and a basic um, kind of surface like this. Okay, so a really common pattern that we're gonna be using over and over again is to divide a surface um, using a surface domain. So let's reference our surface Then we're going to do divide domain squared. You want to divide uh, the surface into a two-dimensional domain. And you have U and V coordinates for that. And then you get a domain, which is just a series. Of, it tells you where a curve begins and ends um, on the surface. And that's important, again, because we don't have X, Y, Z space here. We have U, V space. Um, so you need, you need a special kind um, of language to talk about curvature. So we're going to take that domain, and we're going to take what's called an ISO trim. And we're going to put that in. And so this one wants a domain and a surface. So it's going to trim our surface according to some kind of domain. So take the surface, plug it in, take the domain, plug it in. And you can see that we've got uh, a series of subdivisions. And then if you go in and you add sliders, I want whole numbers. And in this case, I'm going to make them relatively large. So U, V, you have to have more than one. So you can see if I have eight divisions and I have 17 divisions. So I can, I can parcel this up into different, um, different kinds of proportions, okay? And what does that get us? Well, um, there's different ways of distributing geometry um, according to those divisions, okay? Um, and uh, that's where it comes in handy. You can also use it to um, to kind of create structural panels for things. Uh, so there's lots lots of uses for it. Um, it's different than what I showed you before. If you looked at divide surface, this is one way of, of looking at it, and it gives us um, a series of points, but it gives us points on all the edges. And if you want to put something on a surface or cut something out of a surface or project something from a surface, those, those edge points are gonna do us a whole lot of good. If you wanna use the surface as a way to just distribute something, uh, then, then, then maybe that's useful. So, um, but it's different than if we would take our surface here and um, let's say, take that surface and then let's add area. And you can see that now we've got a point in the center of all these and so they're not, they're not on the edges. They're actually inside of these uh, kind of cells. Okay, so I just took an area component and plugged it in. And um, once you've got that though, you can do interesting things like I could take a simple kind of circle and I could distribute it to all those points. Now we got a problem though. If you look at this, so we're in the uh, ZX plane. <clears throat> Circles are in the XY plane, okay? So what we need to do is we need to uh, make a uh, ZX or XZ plane and then put the circles on it. So let's take the centroid, make that where the um, planes are drawn, and then let's draw circles on it. That's better. 
So again, you got to respect the, the plane you're working in. And sometimes that means you have to actually just take a plane and like make it at a certain location. Sometimes you have to do things like find the normal on the surface if it has a curvature. We'll be looking at that, but, but planes are really important when you're working with surfaces. Okay. If something's kind of wacky, it's because it's probably not oriented uh, to the, to the, to the plane properly. So, you know, we could go in, add a number slider for the radius. Let's turn off these up so we can see. So we got circles and you can create kind of a pattern for that. Okay, so really, really kind of basic and simple. You could go in and add a cull and uh, I, could, I could cull, you know, every other one. You know, that can be, become kind of interesting. Um, let me go ahead and add a slider for that. Let's examine that a bit, whoops. <clears throat> so I have a cull slider. And uh, it's a different different kinds of distribution as I go. Some maybe more interesting than others, but get different stripes. That five is kind of neat. Look at that. Hmm. Two, four, one, three, five, four, two. Nice. Okay, so that would be an interesting uh, kind of pattern to look at, right? Uh, I think. And uh, so you could do that. You, you could experiment by taking uh, the circles and applying <clears throat> a random uh, radius to them. So let's take, now we have to know how many there are. We have like 510. One easy way to do that is just take these two sliders <clears throat> and multiply them together. Oops. So 30, 30 times 17, 510. Put that in for our number. And so we get pretty radically different uh, set of um, circles. It's going to shrink this a bit, this domain. There we go. Don't want them to overlap those. And again, completely parametric. So I could always change that. Now, Thursday we'll talk more about how to get logic into this. For now, it's 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 a little it's a little dumb. We can we can kind of brute force some things with it, uh, but it could be it could be really interesting. Um, so you take random. You know, let's try something else here. Let's do a range. Let's do a range from <clears throat> point one to you know again point seven five. And let's plug in our number for that. And this is probably going to be, yeah. So they get, they get roughly smaller and they get larger as they go. So again, that's a, that's an interesting kind of pattern, uh, that, that you could create and, uh, it'd be very difficult to do this by hand. So, um, lots of patterns for things. Um, you could, you could take and you could, you could distribute some squares and you could kind of rotate them. And that might be something or suggest some kind of windows. You could randomly rotate some, uh, squares. You could try other shapes if you want to. Uh, and again, you could always go in with um, some kind of call pattern and, uh, you know, do some really interesting stuff with that to create kind of stripes in your building. Uh, so all the things I talked about in distribution, you know, apply to your services when you've subdivided them. Okay. So kind of interesting what you can experiment with here. Yeah, interesting. Okay, so um, that's you know dealing with kind of a flat surface. Uh, the rules change slightly when you're dealing with uh, a surface that has a curvature, particularly when it's in different planes. So um, what I've got is this uh, surface that I made <clears throat> that has some um, curve. Okay, and the problem is is that whenever I want to put some geometry on it, uh, it's not going to adjust to the curvature unless I do a little bit of work. So let's take a look at what I mean by that. And uh, let's see what we can do about getting some interesting geometry to um, to map to the surface. Okay, so let me go ahead and uh, turn this off. Maybe disable it. Okay, so uh, <clears throat> I'm going to start with this pattern here, which is just the stuff that we've been looking at. So I have a surface; it gets divided. And then uh, we look at the divisions. So let's set this surface 
and let's take a look at what we've got. Yeah, so I've got a set of divisions in this surface that I can change like parametrically. Okay. And what I'm going to do with that is I want to distribute some um, circles to it. So I'll take a circle. And the way I showed you was you, know, you go in and take area and you'd get you'd a nice happy center point. And if I apply my center point to the circles, it looks pretty good from up top. But if I go in, I have the same problem that I had before where everything's just X, Y, even if it's on those points. So I, what I need is a plane for each one of these that adjusts to the curvature, okay? And we've talked about this before uh, when we distributed geometry around that cone uh, at, the, uh, at the beginning, um, during the lab for week one. Um, so we're gonna do a similar thing. So we want a plane that is has a normal that adjusts to the curvature. So we can go in to vector plane, so a plane normal, okay? And those planes are what are gonna go plug into our circles. That's the end result, okay? But this wants um, a vector that's a normal. And so we need to get that from the surface. So we're gonna go into analysis and evaluate the surface. <clears throat> and the sur this will give us a normal. So plug that in. But this wants the UV coordinate on the surface. So we gotta get that. Uh, let's plug in the surface. We know that that's gotta go in there. So we've got these points, but we want to associate them with a UV point, so a local coordinate point that's on the surface. Luckily, there's a tool that can do that. Uh, we have this thing that's called surface closest point, surface CV, CP. So we take the surface and we take a point, which are our, our center points, and that's going to return a UV coordinate for that point. And then the UV coordinate goes in to evaluate, and then we have our planes, and then we have our circles, okay? And, um, oh, except for we need to uh, take the origin of the plane to be um, this point as well. So let's plug that in, yeah. And if we, if we turn some of that stuff off finally, turn preview off, you can see that these are actually adjusted now. Okay. And then we could go through and we could do things like changing um, this, the, um, the size of them and um, with all kinds of logic. But for right now, let's just make them kind of, let's make them bigger and simple. So I just have, I have some circles and I wanna to start to like perforate that surface. Um, you might be tempted to make a Boolean or something. That's actually um, kind of hard to do. Um, you, could, you could take these and, and extrude them. That's kind of what we have been talking about. Um, but you can also punch them out. And uh, I'm gonna warn you, this is kind of intensive. Like this might, slow, this might slow your computer down and it's not something that's going to be actively parametric because it takes so much uh, computation to, do, to, to actually do the operation. So uh, I, would, I would work at this level first until you want to begin to punch it out and then you can, and then you can do this. You're gonna to wanna to do um, a split surface or surface split. So you take the surface, which is this guy, the original surface, and then take your curves and then that's gonna split. And this is the part that's gonna take like a few seconds because it's actually going to, to separate the surface from all of the uh, points you made. And this is actually a bunch of services. It's like 131 services. All you want is the first surface in that list because that's the one that got cut. So just do a list item and we'll talk about this on, um, well, next week. Um, it's set up to take the first item in the index at zero. So if you just plug this into that list item and then turn this off, like preview it, <clears throat> and then turn off your surface, you're actually gonna get your surface. And um, again, I think I've said this a few times, but this, it's actually better than this. Like it just, it's just the approximation of the whole. If I go through and I bake that uh, item, <clears throat> the surface is perfectly fine. Like it's actually got rounded holes and stuff. Okay, so um, that's a technique for distributing some geometry, uh, um, you know, curves over a surface, uh, and then you can apply different logic to them. Um, we'll look at how to do that with an image uh, on Thursday. But um, again, 
planes are really important when you're distributing geometry uh, over um, a panelized surface, right? Panels have planes. I think that's a good thing to think about. Um, so from there, again, you could experiment with um, distributing different, different kinds of um, shapes, uh, shapes that you draw yourself, uh, more parametric shapes, um, applying logic to the shapes, applying culls to the shapes, uh, to get something that happens over um, a complex surface. Okay, that's the end of this part. I will uh, see you in the next one.